The mother shipped in prophecies and what she saw coming. Asteroids, extraterrestrials, modern technology, societal weirdness, apostasy, and more. And her uh, prophecies were locked away for a long period of time. She was a witch. She was uh, a woman that uh, somehow saw things, a lot of them have been fulfilled if we listen to this. She was Ursula Sautail. She lived between 1488-1561, basically around the time she was born before the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus, which was in 1492. But she saw a lot of things that would be taking place in the new continent, so that's very strange. Also, she was um, better known as Mother Shipton, and is said to have been an English soothsayer and prophetess. Now, what is a soothsayer? A soothsayer tells fortunes, and it's the practice of predicting information about a person's life, the scope of fortune-telling, principle identical with the uh, practice of divination. Uh, the difference is that the divination is a term used for prediction predictions considered part of a religious ritual invoking deities or spirits while the term fortune telling implies a less serious or formal setting now the divination or to be inspired by god attempting to gain insight into the request situation by way of an occult standardized process or ritual but uh, what uh, the first publications of her prophecies, which did not appear until about 100 years after, about 80 years after she passed away. They didn't appear until 1641, 80 years after her reported death, contained a number of mainly religious predictions, but only two prophetical verses, neither of which foretold the end of the world, despite widespread assumptions to that effect. That effect. One of the most notable additions of her prophecies published in 1684, states that she was born in Nars, Narsborough in Yorkshire, which is uh, between, so it's north of England, it's just south of uh, Scotland, in a cave known as Mother Shipton's Cave, which along with the petrifying well and associated parkland is operated as a visitor attraction. She was reputed to be hideously ugly and I'm reading to you from Wikipedia. The book also claims that she married Toby Shipton, a local carpenter near York in 1512. And uh, she told fortunes and made predictions throughout her life. It's recorded in the diaries of Samuel Pepys that while surveying the damage to London caused by the Great Fire in the company of the royal family, they were heard uh, discussing Mother Shipton's prophecy of that event. The prophecies, the most famous claimed edition of Mother Shipton's prophecy, foretells many modern events and phenomena widely quoted as if it were the original. It contains over a hundred prophetic rhymed couplets in notably non-16th century language and included the now famous lines, The world to an end shall come in 1881. Okay, well, obviously it didn't come to an end. It sounds very poetic, but it didn't. However, the version did not appear until in print until 1862, and its true author, one Charles Hindley, subsequently admitted in print that he had invented it. And this invented prophecy has appeared over the years with different dates in or about several countries, for example, in the 1970s, Many news articles about Mother Shipton appeared setting the date in, in 1981, then they changed it to 1920s, and the life and prophecies of Ursula Sontail, better known as Mother Shipton, stated the date as 1991, and among other well-known lines from Hindley's fake version, often quoted as if they were original, are, a carriage without a horse shall go, disaster fill the world with woe, in water iron then shall float, as easy as a wooden boat. So, uh, the legacy of her. Quite who Mother Shipton was, or what actually she said, is not definitely, definitively known. What's certain is that her name became linked with many 
tragic events and strange goings on recorded all over the UK, Australia, and North America throughout the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries. Many fortune tellers use her effigy and statue, presumably for purposes of associating marketing, and many pubs were named after her, only to survive, one near her birthplace in Narlesboro, it's spelled with a K, but I pronounce it Narsboro, and the other in Portsmouth, where there is a statue of her above the door. A caricature of Mother Shipton was used in early pantomime, it believed to be, by historians, to be the forerunner of the Panto Dame. Now, Mother Shipton, moth, named after her, each wing pattern resembles a hag's head in profile, with her huge chin sticking out and her whole huge nose hanging down. But uh, let's see about her, um, let's go into her prophecies. So she was Ursula Sautail, 1488 to 1561. The notable prophecies of her publication, she was uh, born in a cave at Narsborough, North Yorkshire, Lind uh, England near the river Nid. Nearby is a petrifying well, which has been a tourist attraction since 1630. Due to its association with the legendary soothsayer and prophet, his mother shipped in the cave, and dropping well together with other attractions remain open to visit, as we said. Mother Shipton, as we know, lived in the time of Henry VIII of England, and predicted his victory over France in 1513 in the Battle of the Spurs. She also predicted the dissolution of the monasteries. This is exactly what Henry VIII did. There were fantastic saints in England. People used to go for, for days to travel to go and see a living saint because their prayers were such help to the people that needed prayers. And uh, he did away with all those monasteries, and not only monasteries but churches. I remember I had gone to Coventry. My son was going to university there in Reading. No, sorry, in um, Warwick University. Coventry is just south of Warwick. And um, uh, there were these ruins of these, these uh, looked like, they looked like the base of pillars that were so huge. And I was thinking, because, uh, you know, my, both my parents were architects and I used to help them in uh, drafting things. Um, and... To me, to look at those columns, which were so huge, I mean, you needed like 10 people to hold hands to go around a, one of the columns. I, I thought, how tall was the building and how heavy was the roof to have columns this big? And, uh, okay, that was destroyed at the time of Henry VIII. So he also destroyed tremendous churches and cathedrals. Um, so she predicted the dissolution of the monasteries this led to the redistribution of the wealth and land held by the monasteries to the emerging middle class and the existing, existing noble families. It's recorded in the diaries of Samuel Pepys that while surveying the damage to London caused by the Great Fire in the company of the royal family, they were heard to discuss Mother Shipton's prophecy of that event. And let's go into the poem of, poems of her prophecies. And now a word, in uncouth rhyme, of what shall be in future time. Then upside down the world shall be, and gold found at the root of tree. All England's sons that plough the land shall oft be seen with book in hand. The poor shall now great wisdom know. Great houses stand in far-flung vale, all covered o'er the snow and hail. A carriage without horse shall go, disaster fill the world with woe. In London, Primrose Hill shall be a center hold a bishop's tree, a bishop's see. Around the world, men's thoughts will fly, quick as the twinkling of an eye. And water shall great wonders do, how strange, and yet it shall come true. Through towering hills, proud men shall ride, no horse or ass moved by his side. Beneath the water, men shall walk, shall ride, shall sleep, shall even talk. And in air, the air men shall be seen, in white and black and even green. A great man then shall come and go, for prophecy declares it so. In water iron then shall float, 
as easy as a wooden boat. Gold shall be seen in stream and stone, in land that is yet unknown. Well, remember the gold rush in the United States, right? They didn't know that land yet. Gold shall be stream and steam and stone, stream and stone, you know, in the quarries as well. We go on to read, and England shall admit a Jew. You think this strange, but it is true. The Jew that once was held in scorn shall of a Christian then be born. And this was way before the uh, uh, the country of Israel, the state of Israel, was uh, approved to be uh, established, okay, in 1938. Now, a house of glass, she says, shall come to pass in England. But alas, alas, a war will follow with the work where dwells the pagan and the Turk. These states will lock in fierce strife and seek to take each other's life. Then north shall thus divide the south, an eagle build in lion's mouth. Then tax and blood and cruel war shall come to every humble door. Three times shall lovely sunny France be led to play a bloody dance before the people shall be free. Three tyrant rulers shall she see. Okay, so we're talking about Napoleon as well, right? Napoleon, and we have the, uh, perhaps the First and Second World War. Quote, and then we go. Three rulers in succession be, each springs from different dynasty. Then when the, firest, the, fear, the fiercest strife is done, England and France shall be as one. And, of course, okay, uh, we had the French and uh, English uh, conflicts, but then during um, the Second World War, they were, of course, allies against Germany. England and France shall be as one. The British olive shall next then twine in marriage with the German vine. Men walk beneath and over streams. Fulfilled shall be their wonder streams. British olive shall then twine marriage with the German vine. We know that the um, uh, Queen Victoria married um, Prince Albert of Saxony. That was her spouse. So he was from Germany and uh, they were, of course, they had many children and most of the royalty are stemming from her in, uh, in Europe. So the British olive shall next then twine in marriage with the German vine. We said that men will walk beneath and over streams fulfilled shall be their wondrous dreams for in those wondrous far off days the women shall adopt a craze to dress like men and trousers wear and to cut off their locks of hair they'll ride astride with brazen brow as witches do on broomsticks now hmm. well yes they do wear trousers and they have cut off their locks of hair for short hair and they ride astride with brazen brow, yes, feminist movement. And roaring monsters with man atop does seem to eat the verdant crop. And men shall fly as birds do now and give away the horse and plow. Hmm, we have tractors. We also have airplanes. We have given away the horse and plow, except for the uh, Amish, of course. And, of course, the verdant crop, man atop. Mon roaring monsters, man atop, means, of course, cars. And we do away with some uh, fields because we have highways and everything. Now they go over there. We'll, there'll be a sign for all to see. Be sure that it will certain be. Then love shall die and marriage cease, and nations wane as babes decrease. Okay, we know what all that means. And wives shall fondle cats and dogs, and men live much the same as hogs. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to comment on that. You decide what you want to say. Wives shall fondle cats and dogs, and men live much the same as hogs. Okay. In 1926, build houses light of straw and sticks, for then shall mighty wars be planned, and fire and sword shall sweep the land. 1926. I guess that was between First and Second World War, 1900. Build houses light of straw and sticks, for then shall mighty men, mighty wars be planned, and fire and sword shall sweep the land. Mm -hmm. Then pictures seem alive, with movement free, 
when boats like fishes swim beneath the sea, when men like birds shall scour the sky, then half the world deep drenched in blood shall die. Okay, well, movements, uh, pictures seem alive with movements free. That's uh, the movies, of course. When boats like fishes swim beneath the sea, that's submarines. When men like birds shall scare the sky, that's airplanes. Then half the world deep drenched in blood shall die. Okay, we're talking about, you know, the First and Second World War. For those who live this century through, in fear and trembling, this shall do. Flee to the mountains and the dens, to bog and forest and wild fens. The uh, people that lived in farms had food to eat. The people that lived in the cities during the First and Second World War had, had problems, of course, sustaining themselves. And it goes on to say, For storms will rage and oceans roar when Gabriel stands on sea and shore. She's referring to the Archangel Gabriel, obviously. And as he blows his wondrous horn, old worlds die and new be born. Now listen to this. This is very important. A fiery dragon will cross the sky six times before this earth shall die. Mankind will tremble and frightened be for the sixth heralds in this prophecy. For seven days and seven nights man will watch this awesome sight. The tides will rise beyond their ken to bite away the shores and then the mountains will begin to roar and earthquakes split the plain to shore. Okay. So the uh, asteroid, obviously, going across the sky is a fiery dragon. Um, we'll, we'll have such a gravitational pull, perhaps, that we have earthquakes and mountains beginning, beginning to soar, roar and earthquakes split the plain to shore. The flooding waters rush in, rushing in, will flood the lands with such a din that mankind cowers in muddy fen and snarls about his fellow men. He bears his teeth and fights and kills and secrets food in secret hills, and ugly in his fear he lies to kill marauders, thieves, and spies. You could imagine what would be going on. Man flees in terror from the floods and kills and rapes and lies in blood and spills blood by mankind's hands will stain and bitter many lands. And when the dragon's tail is gone, Man forgets and smiles and carries on to apply himself too late, too late, for mankind has earned deserved fate. In other words, some kind of a karma will be coming to him. This masked smile, his false grandeur, will serve the gods their anger stir. And they will send the dragon back to light the sky, his tail will crack upon the earth and rend the earth, and man shall flee king, lord, and serf. But slowly they are rooted out to seek diminishing water spout, and men will die of thirst before the oceans rise to mount the shore. The lands will crack and rend anew. You think it's strange? It will come true. And in some far-off distant land, some men, oh such a tiny band, will have to leave their solid mount and span the earth those few to count, who survive this unreadable and then begin the human race again. There's a word there we can't read. And then begin the human race again. In other words, those who are on the top of the mountains that survive will come down to, to see who, is, who, who has survived. Uh, there are, and, and says here, and span the earth, those few to count, very few have been left. In other words, it's an extinction level event. Astronomical and geological. And let's go on. But not on land already there, but on ocean beds, stark, dry, and bare. Not every soul on earth will die, as a dragon's tail goes sweeping by. Not every land on earth will sink, but these will wallow in stench and stink. Of rotting body, bodies of beast and man, of vegetation crisped on land. Crisped means burnt on land. We have had... Comets in the past, the, um, about 12,800 12, years ago, the Younger Dryers event, they found soot in a layer of North America, and they said, oh, it was a comet impact. And then they found that same soot layer in uh, 
nor in uh, the northern hemisphere in europe and then they look around they have that same soot layer in seven different places basically they figured that this was a comet that was in pieces and uh it came to at least seven different places on earth from canada to europe to australia to south uh, africa to south africa to to uh latin america and um, of course, uh, that was the end of the Clovis culture, as we know, in uh, North America. And it was an extinction level. I mean, a lot of species died from that. A lot of humans died from that as well. So this is, is something similar to that. So she says, not every land on earth will sink, but these will wallow in stench and stink of rotting bodies of beast and man, of vegetation crisped on land. But the land that rises from the sea will be dry and clean and soft and free of mankind's dirt and therefore be the source of man's new di dynasty. So new areas will come from the seafloor, be um, uplifted, there will be an uplift and other areas will go down. And these areas will be clean, soft and free for man to start anew going on and those that live will ever fear the dragon's tail for many year but time erases memory you think it's strange but it will be and before the race is built anew a silver serpent comes to view and spew out men of like unknown silver serpent serpent what is this a silver serpent something long fire uh, um, frightening uh unknown uh, you don't see it that often, and it's silvery, meaning it's metallic, uh, shiny, metallic. A silver serpent comes to, comes to view before the race is built in you. A, sil a silver serpent comes to, new, to view and spew out men of unlike of like unknown to mingle with the earth now grown, cold from its heat, and these men can enlighten the minds of future man. Okay, well, what do you know? Did we have legends concerning these beings, these star beings coming down? A silver serpent comes to view. In other words, you see it coming, in, you know, with your eyes. Comes to view and spew out men of, un, of like unknown. Uh, and, and these men can enlighten the minds of future men. We see these in legends of the Hopi Indians, of the star people. And we see them also in uh, ancient Egypt. Uh, what is this? Are these Anunnaki? Are these, what are they? Are they ETs? What are they? Are they uh, Atlanteans? I have no idea, but this is what she's talking about here. And she goes on, to, make, to intermingle and show them how to live and love and thus endow the children with the second sight, a natural thing so that they might Grow graceful, humble, and when they do, the golden age will start anew. Mm -hmm. So they're supposed to be teaching them a new type of proper existence uh, with technology, perhaps. Enlighten the mind of future men. Uh, they might grow graceful, humble, and when they do, the golden age will start anew. It's uh, very important that she says you're humble. In other words, uh, treat your neighbor as you would, you would have someone of them treat you. Now, it says here, the dragon's tail is but a sign for mankind's fall and man's decline. And before this prophecy is done, I shall be burnt at the stake at one, my body singed and my soul set free. You think I utter blasphemy? You're wrong. These things have come to me. This prophecy will come to be. That's the end of it. And uh, no, that's not the end. Whatever. I've had poems found in the outer wrapping of scrolls. I'm, we're going on. Sorry, there's some more. I know I go. I know I'm free. I know that this will come to be. These were found on the outer wrapping of scrolls. Um, I know that this will come to be. Secrets this, for this will be found by later dynasty. And she's saying that uh, even though she, she's made the prophecies, she wrote these poems on the outer wrapping of the scroll, saying that this will be found by later, later generation. A diary made, 
sorry, a dairy maid, a bonny lass, shall kick this stone as she, as she does pass, and five generations shall she breed before one male child does learn to read. This is the, the held year by year, this is then held year by year, till an iron monster, trembling fear, eats parchment, word, and quill and ink, and mankind is given time to think. So a trembling, an iron monster, trembling fear, eats parchment, that's a, the printing press. Words and quill and ink, and mankind is given time to think. And only then this comes to be, will mankind read this prophecy, but one man's sweets another's bane, so I shall not have burned in vain. This poem was found in a separate jar, it says. The signs will be there for all to read. When man shall do most heinous deed, man will ruin kinder lives by taking them as to their wives. Okay, man will ruin kinder, kinder is child in uh, German. Man will ruin children's lives by taking them uh, as to their wives. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say the word, but you know what that means. A murder foul and brutal deed, when man will only think of greed, and man shall walk as if asleep, he does not look, he many not, he many not peep, and iron men the tail shall do, and iron cart and carriage too. Okay, that we're talking about. Uh, what? Buses, cars, trains? The kings shall false promise make, and talk just for talking's sake. And nations plan horrific war, and like as never seen before. And taxes rise and lively down, and nations wear perpetual frown. Over taxation, okay, false promises by leaders and politicians. Yet greater sign there to be seen, as man nears later century, three sleeping mountains gather breath and spew out mud and ice and death. Okay, three, three sleeping mountains being some kind of extinct volcanoes are going to come to life spew, spewing out mud. You know we had mud, fl mud floods, okay? I mean, there are a lot of, uh, we're talking about um, pyroclastic flows, spew out mud, ice, and death, pyroclastic flows, where you have the ice and, uh, you know, the ash mixes with the ice coming down as uh, pyroclastic ice flows, and death. And earthquakes swallow town and town in lands as yet to me unknown. Which lands were unknown to her? It was the lands of, okay, uh, North America, Australia, New Zealand, okay? Uh, you've got a couple of, well, not couple, we have at least three super volcanoes in the uh, United States alone. We have Yellowstone, we have Long Valley Caldera and Valles uh, Caldera Supervolcano and in New Mexico. And you'll see the video on that I just made today that the Texas earthquakes are very close to the Valles Caldera and it, it shook. And it's considered active. That's according to Volcano Discovery. Okay, so, and earth swallows town and town in lands as yet to me unknown, she says. And Christian one fights Christian two and nations sigh, yet nothing do. In other words, you have Christian nations fighting against each other. Okay? Uh, and nations sigh, yet nothing do. And yellow men, great power gain, from mighty bear with whom they've lain. Okay, the yellow men are, of course, the China, yellow men. And the mighty bear, of course, here is a symbol for Russia. And we know that China and Russia are great allies. Uh, now, these mighty tyrants will fail to do, they fail to split the world in two, but from their acts a danger bred, B-R-E-D, an ag, leaving many dead, and physics finds no remedy, for this is worse than leprosy. Okay, okay, so what is this? He's talking about, she is talking about, Something from China. These mighty tyrants will fail to do, they fail to split the world in two, but from their acts a danger bred, bred meaning something came out of, a danger has uh, come out of, an ag meaning a 
plague type of thing, an egg, plague, egg, leaving many dead. And physics finds no remedy. She's talking about science, finds no remedy. For this is worse than leprosy. Okay. What are we going through now? What is this? Oh, many signs for all to see. The truth of this true prophecy. So this is on Crystal Links that I found it. You tell me what that last verse was about. The yellow men, great power gain from mighty bear with whom they've lain. These mighty tyrants will fail to do, they fail to split the world in two, but from their acts, a dangers, a danger bred, an egg, a plague, leaving many dead, and physics finds no remedy, for this is worse than leprosy. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, I, I did this on uh, Mother Shipton. Um, I had done a, an older one on this, but uh, somebody copied it, and uh, I don't want to copy hers. I just want to make a new one because of the... Wow, this... <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. This is, look, a plague, a leg, an egg, A-G-U-E, leaving many dead, and physics finds no remedy for... This is worse than leprosy. This is amazing. Uh, you tell me what you think. Have we seen a lot of these things coming? And she even predicted the London um, fire. I think that was uh, the, the great London fire. London fire. Let me see. I think that was 1666. I remember the great line. Yeah, it was Thursday, September 6, 1666. It gutted London. The great fire of London swept through the central parts of the English city. So this happened about uh, how many, how, when uh, she passed away in 1561. So this was the London fire happened a hundred years after she, a hundred and five years after she passed away, and she predicted that. So you tell me this is a, this is surreal, and uh, God forbid. But you know the thing about the fiery uh, fiery tale uh, that is in. Um, Revelations 8, Revelation 8, we have the, let me see, the seventh seal and the golden censer. We have the, the Revelation 8 has to do with uh, a star, a star. The star, it's not going to be something dark, like a dark planet, it's going to be a great, it says here, Revelation 8, 10. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a gold and a great star blazing like a torch, a scort, a torch. So that's a comet. Okay, that's a comet. Blazing like a torch because the comet has a tail, the ice comes off. Fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and this on, on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter. Many people died from the waters that had become bitter. Okay. Um, and we do have the, um, the mountain. That's on, uh, the mountain here comes before the star. But anyway, that's on uh, Revelation 8.8. 8 says, the second angel sounds trumpet and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze. When the mountain is ablaze, we see it, what, spewing lava, right? It's, it's erupting, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood, a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Okay, that, then we have the uh, Revelation 8.10. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky. So she, she sort of ties into this. I don't know. Uh, she first uh, tried to use this as her prophecy, but... Uh, Okay, I'll leave links below for you for this. Tell me what you think concerning her prophecies. Uh, having to see the gold and streams and mountains of the new land, a land she doesn't, she didn't even know yet, and uh, the uh, modern technology, the feminist movement, and uh, things like that. So, okay, um, please leave your comments. Please be careful, and God bless you. Thank you.
If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.